Magic systems are definitely one of my favorite parts about world building and I really hope I can do them justice when I'm talking about this because I'm quite distracted while writing it so let's let's see what happens here. I've been back and forth about talking about them for a while now and I largely kind of felt this way because I feel like a lot of my basis for creating magic systems comes from Sanderson's laws and they're just so well written out and so easily accessible that I'm like hmm Maybe I should just link those. So I'm going to link them. Um, however, uh, when I sat down to write out my ideas on the matter, I found I strayed a lot from them. And while I've come to realize that they, the laws remain true, I kind of stay on my own path and um, it's kind of informed the my own personal way of writing things. So to catch you up, the following are Sanderson's laws, and you can find uh, detailed descriptions of them in the links below. But they are 1. Solving problems with magic is directly proportional to the audience's ability to understand said magic. Number 2. Limitations are better than powers. And 3. Expand what you know before adding something new. I, I, like I said, links to the essays are down below. They're super informative, super helpful, they're a great place to start with writing magic systems. Um, reiterating on those points that I largely agree with, I want to talk a bit about my experience in creating magic. Now, I've created both soft magic, meaning kind of like ill-defined, ethereal, flavor type magic that that's not really super plot consequential, and if it is, it isn't what the conflict hinges on. At least it's just not super in depth. It's it's a softer form of magic, but I've also created hard magic systems. Um, whether that be through like magical objects, through worlds, through you know types of magic users, etc. And I've created those, and that's sort of where I want to talk about today. A lot of the same principles apply to soft magic systems, and there's definitely like um, a gradient between soft and hard magic. That's you're not just one or the other there's a lot more lenience in creating softer magic than uh harder magic basically um especially when it comes to sanderson's first law where um ill-defined magic um like soft magic isn't usually used to solve problems and if it is that part is a lot less soft i just feel like i'm saying hard and soft over and over again it's weird um you know it's flavor um I suppose. What, what am I going on about? I'm going to talk about things to consider when building hard magic systems. That's what I'm saying. I'm, I am correct in thinking this was written poorly. One of the first things I consider when forming a magic system is what kind of conflict am I focusing on in this story? Um, and what kind of magic would enhance that? The second thing I consider is would it be cool to draw this because I write comics so yeah magic has to have sort of a visual flair to it or at least visual representations that are flary and cool and finally I think what I, th I think like what is an original way to approach this I think that when you want to make an original magic system or an original anything kind of for that matter um, there are three ways to do it one is to magicify something unusual and two is to use something typical it is to use a typical form of magic in an atypical scenario. And number three is to limit your magic in unusual ways. Um, elemental magic may feel overdone, but what if your story is centered around something different, um, a different subculture like theater or um, cooking or debate or farming rather than the typical like sword and sorcery type magic. This is my go-to when I want to write a story about like cursing people because I've always got to find a unique way to achieve that end because I like writing about curses, but I can't write the same story all the time. So I need to make systems that are different, that take place in different ways dif with different people, um, that end up achieving the same result. The same thing goes if you're writing vampires, zombies, werewolves, etc. Like, how can I approach this? Um, in a different setting and use um, the conventions to my benefit to make something interesting. The other way to make an original system is to approach anything, anything at all, 
and ask yourself, how do I make this into a magic system? Fish keeping can be a magic system. Beekeeping can be a magic system. What are things other than keeping animals' bones? Um, carpentry could be a magical system. Anything. I find like craft-oriented like um, skills are really easy to turn into magic systems or add magic to them. This kind of skirts the line of adding a magic system... A typical system to something unusual, but you can make carpentry itself the magic rather than adding magic to carpentry. Sort of like the two examples of that would be like um, <laughs> owning an Etsy store could be some form of magical ritual, or you could use magical rituals to help your Etsy store. Like there's the the two approaches to it. I find that these the like like I said like those two ways of approaching things are kind of the reverse of each other, and um it's usually either you're um leaning on the conventions of magical systems in general, or you're leaning on um, typical magic. And, you know, there's some in between and you really will make something very interesting if you kind of approach it in those ways. It's it's not bad to have something familiar. Um, it's perfectly fine for a bit of familiar to be there. And it's sometimes necessary to make things easier to understand for your audience. The final thing I mentioned is basically Sanderson's second law, and that can be that can be applied to stereotypical magic, like not even altered by like um, the different approaches, or it can be like odd settings, or it can or it can, or it can be added to the odd settings or the odd magic systems. Limitations are very very important in creating uniqueness. I'll probably bring up limitations later in this too, but limitations can come from like characters' internal values, but they can also be more direct and more inherent to the system itself. Um, so let's assume we're talking about a system of magic that's meant to be central to conflict and conflict re resolution. So let's go further and let's assume we're talking um, about a system of magic that's meant to be central to the conflict and to the conflict resolution. So um, uh, this type of magic I feel like can benefit from some additional help beyond the laws and beyond just creating something unique because there is a lot to consider. I especially considered this when I was creating Nine Point which is my comic about cat knights. Um, I wanted to create a magic system that gave my cats powers with sort of the following limitations. I wanted knights, not wizards. I, I didn't want overpowered cats. I wanted, um, I wanted that to be balanced with all the other species in the land. Number two, I wanted everything to be cat themed. And number three, I wanted all rules um, all magical classes to be fun. Um, when I was approaching this, I took a lot of advice from both game design and manga, um, especially shonen, where there's lots of tournament arcs inherently kind of built into it, and it gives you a lot of ideas on how to create interplay within a system. Game design has a lot of advice for creating balanced systems, and when you want to create something with a lot of conflict and interesting kind of interplay within that conflict, um, and, and that was something that I wanted, and video games kind of have that inherently built in because they want every person to be having fun while they're playing the video game. And I wanted all my characters to have fun within their different roles. Um, because it was a large story, I wanted to explore many different types of magic. Um, some of the most important things I now consider when approaching a magic system like this is incongruables, uh, power creep, and I think it's optimum strategy. I'm not sure. Uh, and there's many more, but those are the three I'm going to look into right now while it's approaching lunchtime, I guess. Um, so um, what are those and, and what do they do for your magic system? Well, power creep is something that happens, especially when you're dealing with a very long running series. Um, you need to be aware of it um, as you scale your powers. You can start to kind of render earlier parts of your story kind of meaningless and earlier uses of magic completely meaningless and you need to be careful about this. Um, and this is, sup is a super huge par problem, like I said, when you're dealing with a large story and the fact that you are constantly going to be wanting to scale the conflict to match hype from, from previous arcs. But managing how you scale that powers in different ways 
is important. I think considering how power scales is definitely important when you're considering side characters. Um, while your main character may explore magic further and further, um, you need to consider how side characters are going to keep up while not reaching those same magical levels, like how they can still remain relevant or even how your main character can approach a villain with um, significant power scaling without having to keep scaling up your main character so much that it just kind of gets ridiculous and to the point where you can't write anymore because you've already destroyed the universe once and now what are we going to do? This might be uh, really important to go in depth later in relation to writing sequels, but it is a good thing to be aware of power creep and how it is affecting your story. Um, another prominent issue I see exhibited in stories is the use of like optimum strategy. This is kind of both an issue of writing and of plotting, but it can also speak to something that's broken about your system entirely that you may want to look into. But basically, if your magic system is kind of resulting in two spells being used the exact same way over and over, you kind of have an issue there. If you're thinking about these issues and you're finding that you're, you aren't adding abs obstacles to force your character out of those go-tos, then your issue can kind of be resolved by forcing characters into situations that require experimentation, that requires them to go out of their box. Yeah, it's it's time to do that if that's the case. If you're finding that there's little room for experimentation and that, you know, you have a character that has fireball magic and you need to have problems that can all be solved with fireballs, you know, there might be problems with your magic and you might want to add a little more like fun to it and exploration um and that leads me to my final thing which is kind of a solution to a lot of these problems and that is um the incongruable thing and that refers to um in, in games it refers to like creating items that have different effects rather than creating more powerful items that can easily be con compared to one another. So when you're thinking about your magic system, especially one where where you want balance to occur, it's important to make a magic system that's hard to compare to itself. Sort of like the most blatant example of it is like the traditional like four elements magical system where fire can be earth but water beats fire so no element ends up coming on top um that's a very simplistic version of it you can definitely get more complex and like i'd encourage you to try that out so this is kind of where you look at are looking for interplay. So consider your magic system and its uses and consider the conflict that your story revolves around and how magic can um, create advantages within that. And so you think of problems and think of multiple ways of solving them with different types of magic, different types of things that would help out, and then consider limitations that are also sort of equal. Um, the goal is to have an equally effective but limited set of spells, uh, roles, whatever. Not one solution should easily be the one that comes out on top. Um, they should all have equally limiting and equally effectiveness in solving problems. And you can think of a multitude of problems too, like where some spells might not help you with one ants one problem that you come up with, they might help you with another. Um, and, and the interconnectivity gets pretty ridiculous at that point, but it's something to pay attention to. You don't really want it to be where one spell um, solves every problem and then you never want to leave that basket. And that's sort of where you think about limitations. Like limitations are are super much your friend, are super duper your friend. Like I said, you don't want something that solves every problem. You want tons of different ways to solve things. And you can also look into creating like higher level spells with higher level risks. That's another very effective way to handle like both like your power creep and your, um, your balance within your system. Um, and yeah, that's kind of, those are, those are kind of like the baseline things I look at when I'm starting out with things. I think it just gives you a lot more room to be creative and go explore your magic. And it's just a lot of fun when you come up with something that just works and something that just feels very tight and connected. And, and I think you'll really tell when something's really good is when 
both you and other people are just really excited to like mess around with the magic and, and see how it plays out. Like if you can start thinking out tons of different scenarios and tons of different solutions to those scenarios and like people are excited to figure things out, then they're going to be excited to try and figure things out while they're reading your story. They're going to be like, oh, whoa, what if they did this or what if they did that? And then you throw something completely different out at them and they're like, oh, wow, didn't even see that one coming. You know, I hope that makes sense. Like when imagination goes wild, it's pretty great. And that's kind of my approach to a magic system like this. Obviously, there's tons of other different approaches. Like magic is so wide and varied, which is why the three laws are very helpful. They're they're much more baseline and they can help in very in less specific situations. Um, but yeah, that's all I have for today. Thank you for listening. I am having fun. I had all this on the brain because I had to do the cat economy thing and that's a whole that's a whole bag of potatoes right there um yeah I'm gonna go edit this because I am late um okay see you guys in two days yeah I think it's two days I don't know what I'm gonna talk about then either so (sighs) okay bye